All right, fellas, it's time. Today, we'll be talking about Hindenburg. And I know you guys see the title right now, you're thinking, Kimo, you're absolutely wrong. Am I now? Am I now? Go ahead and find out later in the video if I'm truly, truly wrong about how I see this ship. Anyways, though, let's get right into it. Again, design-wise, I am a loving fan of red hair so i do do like the hair going on and stuff right here <clears throat> under boob always nice to have as well too and so forth but anyways though let's get right into the discussion about this ship hindenburg iron blood heavy cruiser let's get right into it so the, the illustrator i think it's the same one as um yeah e-girl's the same one Benito as well too. Okay. Oh wait, this is Yunsung. Oh shoot. What was that guy? Oh, I'm being a clown. Okay, that explains a lot. Cause I actually like that art. All right, not bad. I like it. I like it. Anyway, stop. Uh, hundred. Uh, level one hundred and twenty. We have basically fifty nine hundred health, three hundred and thirteen firepower. That's a lot, by the way. That's almost battleship tier at this point. That's a lot. 256 torpedo, zero aviation, 232 on the anti-air, 174 on the reload, 80 evasion, medium armor, 25 speed, 145 on the hit, and 15 on the oil cost. So about the same durability as you expect a UR heavy cruiser, but man, that firepower is disgusting. 313 out of 120. That's a lot. Now, one thing I was talking about um with my uh stream viewers or whatever last uh last was it last stream like two days ago check it out boys so stat wise and performances they are somewhat similar but when we look at like say the statistics i'll go ahead and pull up for you guys right here um we go to the twitter real quick and again if you guys want to see the full thing i have a uh live stream like two days ago that I uploaded uh, you guys can watch that i'll go ahead and link it again if you guys want to see the full description but check this out guys right we go over here we do that we do this now check it out right click this as well too now here's drake's stuff and here is hindenburg stuff right so look at this right here shelling are both a right hp are both s anti-air is a on drake and b on hindenburg c is evasion B for evasion on Drake, and the rest are the same. C for torpedo for both, and E for air power for both as well, too. Now we go right here. Look at this. Health pool. Hindenburg wins by 200. Firepower. She wins by a massive, what is that, 24? Yeah, 24. Torpedo also wins again by 11. Anti-air down by 57. Reload up by... Yeah, you guys see that reload difference right there? 35 reload, that's a lot. 80 evasion, 75 evasion, 26 speed. Now look at this right here. What did it say again? Evasion here was C, evasion here was B. Apparently, B evasion is 75, and um, C evasion is 80. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, uh, oh, that's a weird one there, Yostar. Fix that. Just saying. <laughs> That's a weird one right there. <laughs> Anyways, though, I was pointing out the, um, the stat difference. Of course, Drake is like a three-year-old ship now, so of course, very, very outdated, but those are some crazy stats right there for a heavy cruiser. Absolutely crazy stats for a heavy cruiser. Very, very good. <clears throat> now, uh, gear efficiency. We have the first one. Two mounts, heavy cruiser, 130% efficiency. Torpedo, 110 as well, two for one. Now here comes the crazy part. The third slot, 130% efficiency for anti-air or another heavy cruiser gun. That's ridiculous. That's a, that's a big boy right there. That's, that's massive. And that comes out developer 30 as well, too. The double heavy cruiser gun gives her so much more damage it's it's crazy it is insane 
I think this is the first time we have a ship that can do this kind of stuff. Like, you pick an anti-air or you pick another damaging gun. That's uh, that's crazy. That, that's crazy. Oh my lord. There's probably like one other ship I can't think of. Um, but that right there though, on top of my head, that that's that's very very unique. At 120, we have plus one firepower for large cruisers and uh, heavy cruisers as well. Too. Actually, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was anti for something. I don't know why. Um, monitors, large cruisers, and heavy cruisers get a plus one firepower. Very, very nice. Now, when it comes to skills, let's go ahead and talk about the skills. The first skill, the most dangerous game. Ooh, ooh I, I'd believe that, honestly. Increases this ship's firepower and evasion and accuracy by 15%. Well, actually, no, this is the first part. Okay, firepower is 5%. Evasion and accuracy is 15%. Okay. All right, that, that's my... I was like, wow, that's a lot. Okay, no, no, this part is this part. And then 5% right here. All right, we're good. Solid. A lot of durability, extra damage right there. Can't say no to that. Really can't say no to that. Now, the second part here. One of the following two effects applied based on what type of weapon this ship has equipped in her third slot. If it's a main gun, it increases the ship's firepower by 10% more. So you do get the rest of it right there. 15% when you equip a main gun right here. And damage dealt by 5%. So you get 15% firepower. And then you get 5% damage increase. That, that's pretty big. That is pretty big. And shells fired from this ship's main guns ignores enemy sh uh, shields. I'll say shells. Shield. That's pretty good. That, that's really, really good. I'm already liking it already. And if you don't want to use a main gun, you can use an anti-air gun. And an anti-air gun increases the ship's evasion by 10% for a total of 25% with the first part of the skill. And decrease her damage taken by 8%. Very durable right there. When the battle starts, every 30 seconds deploys two shields, lasts 15 seconds, and blocks up to eight shells. Much more durability. You can probably get off two of these in a big boss fight. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. So right there, a lot of self buffs. <clears throat> Damage that pierces through shells. Very, very nice. So I said this in the, the stream or whatever. If you have a Bismarck 2, so she's going to obviously buff up um, Hindenburg, right? A lot of people are saying like Emden and stuff. Of course, they're going to buff them. So right here. Increases the firepower and torpedo and anti-air of Iron Blood ships in the same fleet by 15%. So she gets a 15% firepower increase right there, right? And then gives the another 10% or whatever. Big, big stuff. But here's another thing as well, too. Bismarck 2 has her Calamitous Void Flame, which is the black hole, right? Now, obviously, a lot of the guns in this game, if not all the games, or all the guns, pierces uh, the enemy when shot. But when you have Bismarck 2 sucking them all into one like tight area, Hindenburg will do so much damage if she's shooting at a right angle. And it's going to be ridiculous because she has her torpedoes. She has two heavy cruiser guns. She's an all-out DPS machine. It is crazy how much she's going to do. A lot of buffs, like we're using a Bismarck 2, 15%. Another 15%, 30% firepower, and then you have the 5% damage from the uh, second part of her skill right here. That's crazy. And then you have Emden if you want to use her as well too. That's a lot of juice right there, guys. A lot, a lot of juice. So she pairs very, very well with Bismarck 2 as well too. It's like it's a crazy ship. Even if you don't have Bismarck 2, like a standalone ship, still very nice just because this first skill alone. The second skill, Doom Bringers Euphoria. Three seconds after the battle starts, every 15 seconds after that, fires a level 10 special barrage that inflicts the hunted debuff to the enemy hit based on skills, uh, damage based on skills level. Every five seconds if, all right, microphone died, I apologize for that. Every five seconds if there are enemies with the hunted debuff on the battlefield performs a special attack. So I think it's going to be like E-Girls where it's like a, just a extra barrage or whatever. Honestly, free damage, you can't say no to it. Very nice right here. So, this right here is basically, if, if it's like a bossing stuff, you're pretty much good to go, right? Enemies hit by it, a special barrage, you're probably going to follow a follow-up barrage. It's just extra damage right here. Um, just don't think of it as like anything crazy. It's just, well, it is damage, but like, it's not like something, like, it's not like you're, you're going to read it. No, hold up. 
it's not something you should like overthink. It's basically free damage. So that's how I see it right here. Nothing else comes to render, like no armor break, no slow. It's just extra damage for uh, Hindenburg to do. Basically, it's just an all-out DPS machine. And that's how heavy cruisers are supposed to be. This is what I wanted when I said Hindenburg is either going to be really good or really bad. Because as of right now, heavy cruisers are in a very bad spot. So in order for her to stand out, she has to do so much damage to justify using her in a main setup. And right here, from what I see so far, definitely is the case. And then the third skill, Siren Killer, and then she has her all-out assault as usual. So, overall, this ship is exactly what we needed for heavy cruisers to get back into the game. A lot of self-buffs, a lot, a lot of self-buffs, 20%. Well, not 20%, 15% fire, uh, firepower and 5% damage increase. And then you have the double heavy cruiser gun output. It is ridiculous right here. Absolute machine. Now, going back to what we were talking about earlier, what makes this ship so bad? It's bad because if you guys, if you guys only have two Drake guns, she's taking all of them. She's going to strip your anchorage. She's going to strip your Drake. You're not going to have these guns for anyone else except for Hindenburg. She's taking every single one of your guns and you won't be getting them. That's why she's a bad girl. That's why she's a bad ship because how are you going to rob someone of their own gun? And that's what Hindenburg is going to do. She's going to take both the Drake guns and use them. And she's going to enjoy it and she's going to do so much damage with it. You're just going to have to sit there and cry about it. That's basically Drake. Unfortunately, Drake falls off a lot right here because she's great in like these solo sustain battles where it's a lot of chip damage but overall dps though she loses to plymouth so i'm gonna say hindenburg right here does more damage than plymouth boom she's back in heavy cruiser is now back in because of hindenburg and how crazy this ship is for damage i'm honestly expecting her to be up there in dps with plymouth probably like a slight margin ahead of plymouth who knows actually I know as of right now, I did a test of the challenge mode. And I think Plymouth had like 680k. Drake had like 540k. So I'm expecting if I were to use Hindenburg in that scenario, probably like 700 something k is what I'm expecting. But if it's more than that, that would be something really, really nice. But from what I see so far though, very, very nice uh, kit. And I will say this as well too. I did say uh, Kearsarge is a really powerful ship. Probably the most universal ship, one of the strongest, if not the strongest ship in the game. If you guys are absolutely at end game, if you absolutely are at end game, honestly, guys, honestly, I would probably say Hindenburg is the better option if you're an absolute end game player to max out. Now, obviously, if you're an end game player, you're going to max out everything, but the better ship here is. In terms of a maxed out player, it's going to be Hindenburg. Why do I say this? Is because as of right now, main fleet can do any content in the game. You run your signature New Jersey slash Bismarck 2, Musashi, Vanguard, or your carriers, Implacable, Shinano, Hakuryu, and it gets the job done. It's a very tight slot back there. It's hard to replace anyone, honestly. And for the most part, if you do replace someone, it's like a marginal increase. However, Carrier setup is kind of okay. If you do run a battleship in the middle, you can you do Plymouth or whatever, right? But battleship is still missing that one slot. You have Plymouth, you have Helena. And then that third slot is not actually solidified. You can run like Shimakaze, you can run E-Girl, you can run Helena Meta. There's options there, but it's not a solidified option. It's just flex slots. Hindenburg here, because of how much damage she brings to the table, we got to compare her to like say Shimakaze. But she's much more durable. Therefore, again, depending on how much damage she brings to the table, she basically has a slot into the meta battleship setup as of right now. And if you use Bismarck 2, that's an extra 15% damage increase. And boom. Now she's going to be juiced up even harder. So it's going to be a very powerful ship moving forward, especially because Bismarck 2 is out and available as of right now for people to boost Hindenburg even further than what she already has. So that's why... Honestly, to me, if you are a maxed out, everything is like done on your account kind of player, and you're a meta gamer or whatever forth, honestly, Hindenburg is probably the better choice here for you. It really, really is. And that's how I see it as well, too. Because I, if I were to use, if I were to pick one of these two, I'd probably use Hindenburg, honestly, because I am missing a slot in my battleship setup. 
So having her around is going to be really nice. She wants she doesn't buff anyone, but her damage output is really, really good. So that's all I got to say about Hiddenberg. Absolute disgusting of a ship. Y'all probably got baited by the caption. So, oh well. That's how I, I did say I was going to do it. So, haha. -ha. He's going to take every last one of your Drake guns and use them. And you can't use you can't do anything about it. There is no heavy cruiser out as of right now. None of these heavy cruisers that even comes close to what she can do as of right now. The double mounts, all the self buffs helps out a lot. It helps out a lot. And that this is the truth. If you want tank, you go Anchorage, but then again, nowadays you don't need much tanking, so Hindenburg is just too good, man. She's just way too good. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned to the next one as always, and I will see you guys in the next one.